السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me again, Dr. Halima, and today uh, we are going to start with lecture number one. And the title of the lecture is What is Translation? Now, in this session, we are going to go through the following points. I will, I will mention the points so that you are aware of what's going to happen in a minute. We will find out about the learning outcomes of this lecture. We will talk about the meaning of translation as a noun or as a verb. We will explain the a simple definition of translation and then we will explore some advanced definitions of translation and then we will see how we can achieve equivalence in translating in translating uh, uh, in translation and then we will use we will see how we can use the six WH question in looking for equivalence in translating a text after that we will see whether we can have a good translation or the definition of a good translation we will as well find out about the laws of good translation the rules of good translation last but not least we will mention a more advanced definition of translation which is as a process and product so these are the points we will cover through our session today now if we as i mentioned in my introductory uh, session we should ask ourselves and you ask yourselves what are the learning outcomes of this lecture now by the end of this lecture you should be able to show knowledge of different meanings of the term of translation you should also be able to show knowledge of different definitions of translation as a phenomena and hopefully by the end of this lecture you should be able to make your own definition or your own concept of translation so make sure that you that you are able to do these three by the end of this lecture if you can't then you need to go back and do some work and go through the lecture again until you learn these three things now before you answer the question what is translation we need to know the meaning of translation what is the meaning of translation as a noun or as a verb now I have mentioned here about four just to give you an idea about the meaning of translation as you can see number one the origin of the word translation is the Latin word translatus translatus which means transferred transferred means from one language to another the second meaning which is the dictionary meaning if you look up uh, look it up at in any dictionary the meaning of translation of especially the verb uh, to translate is to express or be capable of being expressed in another language or dialect now I've mentioned here in French to give you an idea 
it means in French, traduction, as a noun. But as a verb, you can see, a traduit, as a verb. Whereas in Arabic, as you know, the meaning of translation, at-tarjama min lugatin ila ukhra. This is the noun. As for the verb, as you know, you tarjimu min lugatin ila ukhra. This is the meaning of translation in general terms. Now, there are so many definitions of translations. And translation has gone through so many developments in theory and practice. What I've done, I've given you first some simple definitions of translation. And then you build, and then we build on that. And I have selected about three or four simple definitions. Now, Catford is a well-known translator and the theorist of translation. He defines translation as the replacement of textual material in one language, SL, by equivalent textual material in another language, TL. SL means the source language. TL, the target language. For instance, if you want to translate from English into Arabic, English is the source language and Arabic is the target language. If you want to translate from Arabic into English, then Arabic is the source language and English is the target language. So, SL is the initials of these, these words, and TL is the initial of these words. Now, this is Catford's definition. Very simple. Now, Newmark, Peter Newmark, defines translation as a craft. Imagine, as a craft, consisting in the attempt to replace a written message and or statement in one language by the same message and or statement in another language. It is more or less the same as the top one. But if you have a message or if you have a statement in English, you need, you need to replace it with the message and the statement in Arabic. And the same, if you have a message in Arabic or a statement in Arabic and you want to translate it from Arabic into English, you need, you need to replace this message or this statement into English. Bell looks at or defines definition from two points of view. Or he mentions, he doesn't define it actually, he just mentions it. He mentions two views. One view, look at translation as an art. Why as an art? Because it used to be done when, especially when the scholars of last century were preoccupied with the translation of literary texts as a pastime. In the past, in the last century, Scholars, or writers, or translators, or not really translators, but scholars, they used to translate, or they used to practice translation in their leisure time. You know, I mean, it's not like they are making money out of it, no. It was like a pleasure for them, especially when they, went, when they wanted to translate literary text, like poetry, drama, novels, and so on. Another view Bell mentions, as you can see, it looks at translation as a profession, where the majority of translators are professionals engaged 
in making a living rather than a pastime. This is mainly clear in the translation of technical, medical, legal, and administrative texts. In other words, translation is like a profession. Translator, translators are like professionals. They make a living out of translation. So, they translate because they want to make money. And what do they translate? They translate mainly all these technical uh, material like legal English or medical text or administrative text, all other uh, types of texts. So Bell mentions two types, two definitions or two views of translation. One, they look at it as an art and one looks at it as a profession, as I have explained. In the present sense of the word, another definition, simple definition, we can look at translation as a generic term, used to refer to the process of rendering a text in one language into an equivalent text in another. Really, translation is like an idiom, or a word, or a term used to refer to the process of rendering. Rendering what? Means transferring, means conveying, means translating, really, from one language into another language. But the important word here is equivalent. So if you have a text in Arabic, you need to find it an equivalent text in English. And, and vice versa. The concept of equivalence, we will come to it later in the session. So these are just simple definitions of translation. Okay, now as you can see, we move to advanced definitions of translations. More yeah, comprehensive than the simple ones. This is due to the developments in translation studies during last century. Now Bell seems to suggest a more comprehen comprehensive definition of translation which stress the dimension which stresses the dimension of semantic and stylistic equivalence in translation. Now here we have two keywords semantic and stylistic equivalence. Very important points. Semantic, which has something to do with the meaning, and stylistic, which has something to do with the style. Equivalence, you will find out later what we mean by equivalence. Now, for him, translation is the replacement of a representation of a text in one language by a representation of an equivalent text in a second language. A represent means to act exactly in place of, some, of somebody or in place of something. Like this text in Arabic we want it to be in English, so the English text should be exactly representation of this. In other words, the English text should represent, should be exactly the same, similar to the Arabic text. In other words, equivalent in meaning and in style. This is according to Bell. Now, there is a more or another advanced definition of translation introduced by Arjona as follows. This is a, this is a bit more uh, uh, more comprehensive than Bell's. Translation translation is a generic term for the interlingual, sociolinguistic, and cultural transfer for what of any message 
from one community to another through various modes of written, oral, or mechanical means, or combinations thereof. In other words, to be honest, this is a very comprehensive one. It looks at translation as a transfer. Of transfer of what? Of the interlingual, interlingual, sociolinguistic, and cultural aspects of any message from a, any from one community to another. It could be in writ, it could be in writing, or it could be written. It could be oral. It could be mechanical, or it be both of them. So this is the uh, this is a more uh, comprehensive uh, definition of translation. Now we come to the the key word of Bell's definition: equivalence, and it is very important. Equivalence. How can we achieve equivalence in translation? Equivalence when we are faced by a text written or oral in a language we know, we are able to work out its equivalence by looking into the following. Now, if you know Arabic and you want to translate a text from Arabic into English, and you want to work out, means you, will, you want to find out the equivalence of this text, of this message, or this statement, or this text, okay? You want to translate from Arabic into English or from English into Arabic. What can you do, what you, what can you do as a star? Now, what you have to do or what you can do, you can look into the following points. The semantic, the semantic sense of each word and sentence. You have to check the meaning and the, the meaning the, the, the sense, the semantic sense means the meaning of each word and each sentence. You can't translate it if you don't know the meaning. Now, the second one is communicative, communicative value. Number three, it's a place in time and space. And number four, the information about the participants involved in its production and receptions. Don't worry about this. The second slide will explain all this in more detail. But these are the points you need to look at if you want to find out or work out the equivalence of any text you want to translate from one language to, into another. Now, this is very important, a very important point. Now, how can we use the 6WH question in looking for equivalence in, in translating a text. I'm sure the majority of you are aware of the 6 WH question. The 6 WH question can be used not only in translation, can be used in all walks of life, in all aspects of professions. You can always ask yourself these 6 questions before you do anything. This is off the subject, but here Bell uses these six WH questions to find out about the equivalence of a text. Now, question number one, or the first WH question, what? You ask yourself. What is the message contained in the text? Before you translate any text or any message, you ask yourself, what is the message contained in the text? The content of the signal, the, the prepositional content of the speech acts. So the first question you ask yourself if you want to find out the equivalence is, OK, what is the message? What is the signal? What is the content? of the speech acts, whether it is written or, or uh, oral. The second question, you ask yourself, why? Why am I translating this? Now, the word why, or the question why, 
orients us towards the intentions of the sender, the purpose for which the text was issued. Now, you need to ask yourself, why, why did the writer write this message? Or why did the speaker is saying this? So, you need to ask yourself always why he is saying this and why he is writing this. It's very important. Now, the third question you ask yourself when you want to translate any message, any text, any statement, is when, when is this statement was issued? Now, it, when is concerned with the time of communication realized in the text and setting it in its historical context, contemporary or set in recent or remote past or future. Now, when you are translating a text or a message or a statement, again, you can apply this question when. When was this written? The time is very important. Is it, was it written in the past, two or three hundred years ago? Or was it written a few, few days ago? Or is it written for the future? So time is very important because it gives you a lot, a lot of information about the text. Now, question number four, how? How, how is a bit ambiguous? Ambiguous means vague, not clear. So, it could refer to two things. Manner of delivery, how. It means how was the message delivered? The manner it was delivered. They say the tenor of the discourse. Was the tenor or was the manner of the writer or the speaker serious or ironic or comic? So you need to understand the tenor of the discourse, the manner of uh, uh, the discourse was delivered. The second, it could refer to the medium of communication. Now, the mode of discourse, it, uh, there is a big difference between a written discourse and oral discourse. And this is very important uh, uh, if you want to find out the, uh, about the equivalence of this particular discourse. So how how is concerned with the manner of delivery or the medium of communication. Now question number five, where? The W question number five, where is concerned with the place of the communication? The physical location of the speech event realized in the text. The place. I mean, the text, was it? Did it take place in Europe? Did it take did it take place in the Arab world? So you need to check about the place. Did it take place in the company? Uh, did it take place in, uh, 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 in another place? So the place of the text, the place mentioned in the text, plays a great role in helping you find it out, the equivalence of that text or that message or whatever you call it, is a message, or a text, or a statement, or a discourse. Now the last, the last question, who? Who refers to the participants involved in the communication? The sender and receiver or receivers, both spoken and written reveal the characteristics of the speaker or writer as an individual. In other words, when you translate, after you have read it, you ask yourself, who wrote it? What kind of person was he? It is addressed to who? The receiver. Now, when you go through the text, you will be able really to get a lot of information about the person who wrote the message and to who it is written to. So the main characteristics and the main qualities. And this would affect the message and consequently it would help you find out the equivalence of the text in another language.
So these six WH equations, if you apply them uh, uh, properly into any text you want to translate from one language into another, help you find the right equivalence of a text or a message or a statement. Now, somebody might ask me now from you, who would say, what is a good translation? That's a very difficult question. A very difficult question. Although Bell defines a good translation, but it's my personal view, it's a matter of taste. It's a matter of taste. Before we go through uh, Bell's definition. Now, according to Bell, a good translation is that in which the merit of the original work is so completely transfused into another language as to be as distinctly apprehended and as strongly felt by a native of the country to which that language belongs as it is by those who speak the language of the original work. It's a bit advanced definition, it's a bit comprehensive, it's a bit uh, complicated, but in a nutshell, it is really translating a text, the original, the original, you have an Arabic text, it's written by X original work and you want to translate it into English it has to be exactly original like this which is impossible but according to Bell a good translation is which 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 achieves this particular uh, criteria now he said the original work is so completely transif transfused into another language Transfused is a word used if you want to transfuse blood, you know, blood transf transfusion. It is a very nice word to use, like making the translation like a, like a blood getting into your body, into your veins. The blood of your body goes into the blood of another body, so it is exactly your blood transfused. And when it is transfused into another language, it must be understood, apprehended, distinctly ap apprehended. It means it clearly understood by you and by the other person. If I understand this text in Arabic and I want to translate it from Arabic into English, this person, this English person, should understand it clearly exactly the same way as I do and he should feel as exactly as I do so this is really a good translation which is I'm afraid to say this is very ideal and I would love to achieve this I am a practitioner and a theorist in translation, but still, it is not. It is good to at, to aim at. Very good. Put this a target, but it's not that easy or simple to achieve. But this is a this is a good translation. Of course, it is a, a good translation if we can achieve this. So put it in front of you as a target, as a goal when you are translating. Always ask yourself: Is it a good translation according to these criteria or not? Okay. Now, there are certain rules and regulations for good translation. Now, the three laws of good translation. As a result of the above definition of translation, the following three laws emerge from it. Now, a good translation 
should give a complete transcript of the ideas of the origin, the original work. Again, transcript of the ideas. The text has got ideas, so you have to transfer these ideas into another language exactly as they are in the original work. It's not only that, the second law that the style and manner of writing should be of the same character with that of the original. Again, as I said earlier, the style is very important. So you have to make sure that the style of the Arabic writer A is transferred to an English writer A, exactly the same, of the same character, the same ideas. Not only that, the most difficult bit of this law, the last law, is very, very difficult to achieve. That the translation should have all the ease of the, uh, the original composition. Not easy to achieve, but it's good. If you could achieve this, it's beautiful. The ease of the origin. It means when you read something, you feel, you feel it flows. You feel it's, it's beautiful when you read it. It, uh, it reads well. And you feel good about the ideas, about the structure, about the style, about the manner, about all other factors that play a role in writing a text. So this feel of ease and comfort should be transferred and should be translated into English. Now, I don't know about whether an English person would feel the same ease and comfort and, and relaxed about the style of a certain Arabic text. So these are the three main uh, laws that emerge from good translation. The most or a more advanced definition of translation can be seen when we look at it as a process and product. This is a very recent development in translation. And it is a very important. And I would like to end my uh, session with this particular point about translation. So translation could be defined as the abstract concept, which encompasses both the process of translation and the product of that process. In other words, translating is the process. It means that to translate means you, it is the activity rather than the tangible object. It is the activity you are translating. It is not the product. It is the process. It is how you are working it out. So this is the process. And it, and it is, it's been it's been uh, researched a lot, this process of translation. So translating is the process, and translation is the product of the process of translating. In other words, the translated text. So a more advanced definition of translation is really to look at translation as a process and product. Process is, is the activity and a product is the, is the translated text, the result. And I would like to thank you very much for this session and, and uh, see you next session, inshallah. Thank you.